What is up, everybody? Back with another video here. And with this one, I'm going to be giving you my favorite album from every year between 1970 and 2020. So that's going to be 50 years there. And um, I have done a lot of these like in top 10 lists, top 10 of like 75, 76 and all that. But um, there's like 15 or so I haven't done yet. And I want to put them all in one video. Been doing them over a course of a couple of years now. Some people are new here, haven't seen my picks for all this stuff. But uh, just going to give you my favorite between hard rock and metal. Not going to go soft rock or anything, but hard rock and metal albums from 1970 to 2020 and one honorable mention. Yes, I'm well aware there is a ton of great stuff from each year. There's a few that I might like mention a third album, but I'm going to try to keep it pretty quick here. Just my favorites, honorable mention and move on to the next year. But uh, everybody just kick back, grab yourselves an RC Cola today. Pepsi and RC Cola, good, Coke, bad, trash. But uh, RC Cola, pretty cool, great drink, and um, no, I'm not sponsored, just whatever. We're uh, going to start off 1970, obviously. At this point, for me anyways, the body of work to choose from isn't huge. There's, there's a decent amount of good albums and stuff back then, but uh, obviously I got to go with Paranoid as my number one of 1970. The Godfathers of Heavy Metal, Black Sabbath, amazing stuff. Tony Iommi, Godfather of Metal right there. So this is really awesome album. A lot of classics on it. War Pigs, title track. Fairies Wear Boots is probably my favorite on here. But um, honorable mention, you got to keep it with Sabbath. The self-titled debut, The Birth of Heavy Metal. Love a lot of that album. Really good stuff. So that is my honorable mention. Um, 1971, I'm going to go with Led, Zeppel uh, Led Zeppelin IV. Um, you know, great stuff. Zeppelin is awesome. Bluesy hard rock. Some people label them as metal. I never have. I uh, love Jimmy Page's playing. Robert Plant, amazing vocalist. And my number two of that year, I'm actually not going to go with Sabbath. I'm going to go with the self-titled debut album from Budgie. Amazing classic hard rock metal, whatever you want to call them, from uh, Wales in the UK. Killer stuff. Some of it does sound like, you know, early 70s Sabbath, kind of doomy. Really heavy for the times, great vocals, just a really awesome underrated band that, um, you know, really close to getting a number one spot on a couple of these years you're going to see. But 1972, we got to go with Machine Head from Deep Purple. Richie Blackmore, amazing. Ian Gillen, amazing on vocals. The guitar work from Richie is great. Um, just classic album, a lot of their best known classic stuff. Smoke on the Water uh, is on that album. And then number two, I got to go with Squawk, another one from Budgie. Fantastic again, great underrated hard rock metal again, whatever you want to label it as. Um, 73, and gonna, I'm going to go with Sabbath again here. Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. Love this album. It is my favorite from the 70s by them. I uh, love Iomi's guitar tone on here. The riffs are amazing. The title track, Sabra Cadabra, amazing stuff. And uh, again, going with Budgie as my uh, number two. Never Turn Your Back on a Friend. That is the album with Bread Fan, which... Some of you uh, may know Metallica covered it. Really great song. And uh, 74, got some more stuff I can show here. I'm going to go with the self-titled debut from Kiss. Now, this one didn't rank super highly for me on my uh, Kiss like discography ranking, but from what was going on at the time, this one I got to go with as my favorite. Still do think it's a really good album. Love Ace Fraley. Uh, Paul Stanley, I think, is one of the better hard rock vocalists of all time. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I did rank him 10th a while back when I did that video. Strutter, um, Firehouse, freaking Deuce, Black Diamond. A lot of great classic songs on here. So that is my number one of 74. And my number two, got to go with my boy Ted Nugent, the Amboy Dukes, Tooth Fang and Claw. You know, shout out, all right, all right, all right, to Matthew McConaughey, freaking wearing... I don't know if it was probably his decision or not, but uh, in the uh, movie Dazed and Confused from 93, it's set in the 70s, and McConaughey in the movie is wearing this freaking shirt of all things. You look closely if you've never noticed it. I'm sure you all have if you've seen the movie, but that's really cool. Earned some extra points for that movie in my book. Uh, really good album, too. There's a couple of classic songs he uh, Ted redid on, like uh, Double Live Gonzo. You got Hibernation. Um, Great White Buffalo was originally on here. Lady Luck is an awesome song. But a uh, really, really cool album from the Amboy Dukes there. 75, um, of course, Ted Nugent, self-titled debut. This is one of my very favorite hard rock albums of all time. Strangle Freaking Hold, greatest hard rock song ever made, in my opinion. Got the riff, the production's amazing, the solo's amazing, all around. Cliff Davies on the drums, 
one of the all-time great underrated rock drummers, Derek St. Holmes on vocals, such a smooth, melodic, amazing voice. And of course, Rob Grange, the bass in that song is freaking amazing. He co-wrote it. Uh, he was in the Amboy Dukes for their last couple albums, came over with Ted to his solo career on the first couple of albums. But uh, Storm Troopin', Just What the Doctor Ordered, Motor City Madhouse, so many great songs on here. So that is my number one of 75. And my number two of 75 is Physical Graffiti. Amazing album from Led Zeppelin again. Really long, but uh, super consistent. A lot of great stuff on there. Of course, Cashmere, biggest song on it probably. But um, 76, and I'm going to try to go through this kind of quick. As y'all can tell, there's 50 freaking uh, years here I'm trying to get through. But 76, again... If y'all seen, you know, I've done top 10s on like 75 through 2006 or maybe 2005. So, you know, you can go back and look at like my whole list of the bigger list, but I want to put it all in one video here, as I said. So um, just my top two choices of each year. But number one of 76 for me is freaking Free For All by Ted. Um, he was on a roll at this point. You know, he was one of the, I feel like people forget just how big and freaking awesome Ted was in the mid to late 70s. Very popular, you know, each of his first, the first two solo albums went double platinum. Uh, Cat Scratch Fever went triple platinum, double I've Gone to a triple platinum. So he was, you know, very successful, huge selling out arenas, headlining a lot of those big, you know, mid to late 70s hard rock festivals like Texas Jam, co-headlined with Aerosmith, uh, some other big ones there in the mid to late 70s. But yeah, awesome album, free for all. I don't know if I should try to go through a couple songs on each one. Some I will, some I won't, but Dog Eat Dog is fantastic. Writing on the Wall, uh, one of his best songs, top five for sure. And uh, my number two from 76 is Sad Wings of Destiny, which I do have a vinyl copy of. I just forgot to grab it for some reason, but amazing stuff. Judas Priest, uh, my freaking second favorite heart, or metal band, my second favorite metal band of all time. And um, yeah, great album there. Um, the Ripper. Um, a lot of great stuff on the album, but moving forward, just getting my stuff in order here. Numbers or not number. I'm used to saying like number, whatever, but 1977. So moving up, we got Ted again, the three peat champ in my book from 75 to 77 for best album. Got Cat Scratch Fever. Awesome stuff. You know, if you open it up, there's the whole picture there, but of course, Cat Scratch Fever, I think is one of the best riffs of all time. Maybe it's overplayed to a to a degree, but Wang Dang, Sweet Poon Tang, Death by Misadventure, Sweet Sally, super cool underrated song, just great freaking hard rocking album right there. And um, number two from 77, I'm going to go with Let There Be Rock by ACDC. That title track, whole lot of Rosie, amazing stuff, love Angus and Malcolm's tone, great riffs, of course, Bon Scott, one of the best front men of all time. Um, number, again, number. I'm saying number, I'm not listing numbers, but I'm so used to doing that. But 1978, we got... Van Halen, gotta be, self-titled debut album, um, another one of the greatest hard rock albums of all time, Eddie Van Halen, I have said, I think he has the very best tone of all time, very innovative player for the times, nobody heard anything like that at this point, um, just amazing finger tapping, tone, the riffs, the solos, all awesome, of course, David Lee Roth, amazing front man, the whole band, Michael Anthony, Alex Van Halen as well, uh, all great, Atomic Punk, um, I'm the one is probably my favorite Van Halen song on, on fire is a really good underrated one, but great album from start to finish. One of the best for sure. And, uh, my number two of 78, got to go to stained class by Judas priest. Awesome stuff. Um, beyond the realms of death is probably I'd say Glenn Tipton's second best guitar solo of all time. Might talk about his number one a little bit later in the video here, but exciter is amazing on here. Uh, Heroes End, The Saints in Hell, Rob in top tier form here, amazing vocalist, he is my favorite in metal, but uh, yeah, awesome stuff there. 1979, gonna go with Van Halen 2 as my favorite album from that year, probably a bit heavier and darker than Van Halen 1, and I've said in the past that Van Halen 1 is my very favorite Van Halen album, but this one is so close. And in the future, I feel like it could overtake it. But uh, DOA, Light Up the Sky, so many freaking awesome heavy songs on here. Again, whole band on fire. Uh, my number two from 79, got to go with Overkill by Motorhead. Awesome stuff. Um, love that classic trio. Fast Eddie Clark, Phil Taylor, Lemmy. 
RIP to all those guys. Overkill is my favorite Motorhead song. It's in my top three albums overall. Depends on the day, but definitely Overkill, I'd say, is my favorite song. And Stay Clean, another top five Motorhead song of all time. Just great, great stuff. Um, so on to the 80s, got through the 70s pretty quick there, but um, 1980, got to go with Heaven and Hell as my number one. Uh, the first album by Black Sabbath with, Ron with uh, Ronnie James Dio, of course, another one of the best vocalists ever, just such a powerful voice. Um, of course, Iomi, all the riffs, the riff machine all over this album, um, Die Young, I have listed as my favorite Black Sabbath song of all time, um, Neon Nights, title track, of course. Top to bottom, most of this is freaking amazing. So that is my number one from 80. And got uh, honorable mention here, or runner-up, I should say, to Scream Dream by Ted Nugent, of course. Love this album. There's some really, really good, heavy, underrated songs on here. Hard as Nails, you know, go listen to that song if you don't know it. If you like heavy freaking riffs and hard rock and stuff, that one is awesome. And um, Flesh and Blood, another really good, underrated song on here. But, of course, the title track Wango Tango, uh, the biggest song on here. Really, really good album. Um, 1981, I'm going to go with Mob Rules. I don't have a copy of it, I don't believe, but um, of course, second album with Ronnie in Black Sabbath. Um, a lot of great stuff there, Falling Off the Edge of the World, the title track, a uh, couple. But um, And my number two for that year, probably one of the more obscure picks that I'm going to go with here on this list, but... Uh, End of the World by the band Gaskin. Um, this was a really, really, they're still together now, actually, but a really, really underrated and great New Wave of British Heavy Metal band. Um, Paul Gaskin on lead guitar and lead vocals. Really talented guy. They had a couple albums back in the day. They've had a couple more recent, but uh, really, really good stuff. Go check it out if you don't know it. Um, 1982. Now, this one was one of the more difficult ones to differentiate my number one and two because... I'm sure you all know before I even say who it's going to be. It's between Maiden and Priest, obviously. But as of now, I got to got to stick with Priest as number one. Screaming for Vengeance from 82. Just such a great classic album. And of course, the number two is an amazing classic album as well. But Electric Eye, Riding on the Wind, Bloodstone, Take These Chains. So many great songs. Title track is amazing. You've got another thing coming. Uh, Devil's Child. Love this album, and I do really love Number of the Beast, which is my number two from 82. Um, super close. Freaking Hallowed Be Thy Name is one of the most epic, amazing heavy metal songs of all time. Um, the live version of that from like 82, it's on YouTube. Bruce, just one of the best vocal performances ever. Um, Children of the Damned, title track, Gangland, which I think Gangland is awesome. Really cool, underrated, kind of you know, unfairly hated on song by some, but I do really like Gangland and love this album. Um, just awesome stuff. So that is my number two of 82. 83, I will go with Maiden as my number one. Peace of Mind. Got the Trooper on it, which is my favorite Maiden song. I've got it freaking tattooed on my arm, the single artwork that went along with it. Love everything about the song. The lyrics are cool. The riff, um, that opening, you know, all of it's amazing. And there's a lot of really great songs on here. It was their first with Nico McBrain on the drums. Where Eagles there to open it up. Got that awesome drum intro to basically introduce Nico to the band. Let everybody know he's amazing. Um, Die With Your Boots On, another one of my favorites on here. But top to bottom, I do really even like a lot of the songs on side two that people don't really care for sometimes. You know, To Tame a Land, Sun and Steel, Still Life, Quest for Fire. Those are all uh, really, really good songs as well. But um, yeah, great album. And my number two for 83, I'm going to go with Holy Diver. The first album by the Dio Band. Of course, him, Ronnie James Dio, and Vinnie Apice broke off. You got uh, Vivian Campbell on guitar, who's a freaking machine. Great, great player. Some blistering fast, amazing shred guitar solos on here, especially like in Stand Up and Shout and just that opening riff, super fast and awesome. Title track on here is great. Shame on the Night is amazing. Rainbow in the Dark. Fantastic album. And I, I've gone back and forth between Peace of Mind and this one, so depending on the day, it could change, but Peace of Mind is my number one at this moment. And 84, my number one is my favorite, Heavy Metal. Yes, Heavy Metal. This band is debut album of all time. Got Out of the Cellar by Rat. 
Love the twin guitar of Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby. The very cool and unique voice of um, Stephen Piercy. Juan Crocier on bass. Bobby Blotch was really cool on the drums as well. Um, top to bottom, I just love this album. It was the first album I ever purchased. It was on CD at that point when I was like eight years old. Like So that's like 16, 17 years ago now. But uh, Wanted Man to open it up is freaking fantastic. Round and Round has one of my favorite guitar solos ever. Just epic, awesome stuff. Um, I'm Insane is a really cool one. But as I said, love the whole album. Got Tawny Katane on the front. RIP to her. She passed away uh, somewhat recently. But great album. And my number two. I hate to put this band number two because I freaking love them as well. I do like this band overall. Definitely a lot better than Rat. Um, I do love Rat, but Wasp got their self-titled debut. Just got to keep Rat at number one in this instance. Um, but this is number two for me from 84. And yes, I'm aware there's a lot of other great albums from 84. I've done a top 10, so go check that out if you want to see my full list. But uh, yeah, love this album. Blackie, I think, has... I was talking to somebody about this the other day. We're talking about coolest, most unique voices. I might have to say Blackie Lawless for me. Love his voice, the way he structures his vocal, you know, the melodies in the um, verses and the choruses are always so catchy. Just amazing stuff. A lot of the time it's pretty dark uh, sounding material as well. I Want to Be Somebody, Love Machine, The Torture Never Stops is arguably, I mean, it's not my favorite Wasp song. We'll talk about that one in a minute, but that's yeah, in my top three or four for sure. Really, whole album, fantastic. Um, 85 now. So I'm going to go with Under Lock and Key by Dokken. Great stuff. Classic, classic metal. You got George Lynch on guitar, who, one of the best ever. Don Dokken is another one of my favorite metal vocalists. Uh, Unchained the Night to open this up is super cool and awesome. I remember when I was like nine years old, my dad got me an MP3 player. So this is back like 05, 06. And that was one of the songs on there. He put like 20 songs. So been listening to this one for a long time and I thought it was like one of the coolest things ever. Um, Jeff Pilson on bass, Mick Brown on the drums, both great as well. Uh, Lightning Strikes Again, super awesome song. One of their heaviest, fastest of all time. Till the Living End is great. In My Dreams, love that. The solo in that is maybe George Lynch's best of all time. But uh, yeah, amazing album. Number one of 85 for me. And again, there was two that I was so hard to freaking narrow here at for my number two i'm gonna mention for this instance i'm gonna mention two my number three as of now i think i'm gonna go with thunder in the east i wasn't gonna do this but i gotta thunder in the east is my number three love akira and the boys but my number two i gotta go with wasp again just blackie and wasp i love so much they're in my top five bands of all time uh wild child to open this up is in my top 10 songs of all time i've done all these lists in the past but so I'm not just saying it, it's up on YouTube. Wild Child, love everything about the song. The chorus is amazing. The guitar, uh, freaking Piper and Holmes, great duo. Um, yeah, love all these songs. Title track, Blind in Texas is super cool. Cries in the Night, Fistful of Diamonds. Uh, amazing stuff. So that is my number two of 85. Um, 86 now. Gonna go with one, obviously, anybody that's seen my videos knows what this is going to be. Peace freaking sells, but who's buying? Um, Megadeth. I don't know why I'm showing that like that, but yeah. Love that I have this on cassette as well. Super cool. Um, of course, the lineup at this point, Gar Samuelson, Chris Poland, Dave and Dave is amazing. Top tier musicianship. Um, of course, like Chris and Gar, a bit more of jazz background and, you know, fused with the thrash and all. They gave it a super unique sound. Uh, just amazing, fast, blistering guitar, amazing production on here. Wake Up Dead, The Conjuring, Title Track, Devil's Island, Good Morning Black Friday, my personal favorite on here. Super amazing song. My Last Words, one of Dave Mustaine's best solos, that solo towards the end of the song. Top five metal album ever, without question in my, in my book. And my number two of 86, got to go with Somewhere in Time, Iron Maiden. The first album, which they were using guitar synthesizers. Some people didn't really like it. I think at this point, most Maiden fans really love this album, including me. This is my favorite Maiden album for sure. Love everything on it. 
Cops Are More in Time, and um, Deja Vu, Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, probably my three favorites on here, but again, most of it, really all of it is freaking killer. Um, 87, gonna go to Hall of the Mountain King, the Oliva Brothers, amazing talents, such a powerful voice from uh, John, Chris, amazing, amazing player, uh, super clean, the shred, mind-blowing, blistering fast, the riffs are amazing, the tone, he was taken away way too soon, hit by a drunk driver when he was like 30 years old, super sad, pisses me off, I say this every time, but uh, 24 hours ago, the title track, um, Beyond the Doors of the Dark, Legions, amazing album, that is in my top, I'd say top 20 metal albums of all time, and my number two from 87, I'm gonna go with Abigail, uh, by King Diamond, another one of the most unique voices. I talk about Blackie, but definitely King Diamond is another one I throw in that conversation. But one of the most unique and one of the best, um, of course, King Diamond on those first two albums was three-fifths of the uh, Merciful Fate lineup. Michael Denner and Timmy Hansen came over from Merciful Fate with King, joined by Andy LaRock on co-lead guitar and Mickey D on the drums, who... Just an amazing lineup, amazing album right here. Love the debut as well, Fatal Portrait. But um, yeah, everything on here, The Possession, Arrival, Mansion in Darkness, uh, just amazing stuff. Love that album cover as well, super cool. Um, and then we're up to 88 now. Going to go with Operation Mind Crime as my number one. Uh, best concept album of all time. Top 15 metal album ever. Jeff Tate. Such a powerful voice. Um, I was thinking about best vocal performances ever. This isn't really related to this specific album, but Tokyo 84 on this tour, I think, for the warning. Uh, that is some of the best footage I've ever seen. Best vo live vocals I've ever heard from Jeff on that. But uh, yeah, this album's just a masterpiece. Revolution Calling, the title track, uh, Eyes of a Stranger. So many amazing songs on here. So that is my number one of 88. And um, yes, we're hard rock and metal with this. So this qualifies Kingdom Comes debut. Lenny Wolf, I did rank my number one hard rock vocalist of all time. Go check out that video. Did it with Pete from Sea of Tranquility uh, a while back. But yeah, he was my number one. Love Kingdom Come. They're a top three hard rock band for me. Um, love all these songs. Shout it out, it's amazing. 17, The Shuffle. Of course, they were... I think they were unfairly labeled a Led Zeppelin ripoff band on this album. Get it on. Yes. I think that's the main song that the, uh, when it breaks in the riff sounds similar to cashmere. Yes. But they got like 12 albums of original material. That is amazing. Lenny Wolf, again, my favorite hard rock singer of all time. I think this album is pretty much a masterpiece. So that is my number two of 1988. Uh, moving on to 89 now, we got The Great Radio Controversy by Tesla. Again, just amazing, classic. I've said this is metal in the past when I did. You know, it's it can be labeled as metal or hard rock. Hang Tough, amazing song to open it up. Lady Luck, Heaven's Trail, No Way Out. Really heavy, you know, bluesy, hard rock, metal, whatever. Frank Hannon, um, Tommy Skiach on a guitar, great, great duo, amazing guitar work, great vocals, um, just everything about that album's awesome, um, 80, or yeah, we're still on 89, my number two, I'm gonna go with Gutter Ballet, got the Oliva Brothers again, amazing stuff, <clears throat> hold up, hold up, voice cracking up a bit there, but yeah, so, uh, Gutter Ballet, great album, that one, uh, a bit more diverse, I think, than their previous material. So like more piano and whatever mix in there some, but still some really heavy hard rock and stuff. Metal, great. You know, like Hounds is one of my favorite songs by them. Just blistering guitar work from Chris on that song, which is amazing. Um, 1990, another one that, if you've watched my videos in the past, very obvious top two. Um, Rust in Peace is my favorite album ever made. So that is my number one for 1990, obviously. Top to bottom, all of it's awesome. Holy Wars, Hangar 18. Um, don't feel like listening to the rest. We're going to try to speed it up here a bit, but amazing stuff. First one with Marty and Nick, which that's my favorite lineup of the band. Uh, Marty is my favorite metal guitarist. Such a smooth, 
majestic player, hanger 18, some of the best shred, and just soloing ever. Um, Painkiller, obviously, number two for me. My number two metal album ever. Um, love everything about it. First one was Scott Travis. Thought he kind of added a burst of energy to the band, you know, Turbo and Ram It Down, I do like, but this absolutely destroys both of those albums, and this is easily my favorite Judas Priest album, uh, so that is number two of 1990 for me. Would be number one if it was released any other year, but Rust in Peace, gotta take number one for 90 for me. Um, 91, gonna go with Horoscope, which I forgot to take down off the wall, it's right up there. Overkill, um, you know, they. this was their first album without Bobby Gustafsson. They got two guys to replace them. People probably were concerned, but I think they put out their best album after losing their, you know, original guy on guitar. Heavy, awesome stuff. Coma, nice day for a funeral. A lot of great stuff on that album. Um, my number two, you know, in the past, I had ranked a certain album three and a certain album two. At this point, I'm flip, flip-flopping them. I'm going to go with Night of the Storm Rider at number two by Iced Earth. This is my favorite album from them. A lot of their great classic songs are on it. Schaefer, Riff Machine, one of the best rhythm guitar... I've labeled him the best rhythm guitar player of all time in metal. Dude just lays out riffs like you would not believe. So many amazing riffs. This is their only album with John Greeley on vocals. Um, they would later get Matt Barlow, who is the like classic guy that's more beloved. But I think Greeley did a really good job on this album. Um, you know, again, a lot of their great classic songs on here. If you listen to like... I think oh, I thought I had a sitting right there, but uh, Live in Athens, there's like six or seven songs they played from this album, I believe. But yeah, amazing stuff. Um, 1992, going to go with, of course, Countdown to Extinction. There is no limitation on the amount of uh, out, like, you know, I'm not, I didn't say like two albums max per band or anything for this. I think that would have been dumb. So, you know, unlimited amount if I think they're deserving of number one and for me, Megadeth definitely uh, gets the number one spot again here. This is the third time they're at number one. Countdown, a masterpiece, not quite as thrashy as their previous material at this point, but still amazing. It was, um, it debuted at number two. Freaking Billy Ray Cyrus kept them from being number one. It's bullshit, but whatever. Um, great album, top to bottom, Ashes in Your Mouth, probably my favorite song on there. Um, number two from 92 for me, looking at what I wrote down, Vulgar Display of Power. I've got that one on CD as well somewhere, but couldn't find it for whatever reason. Pantera, amazing band, Dimebag Daryl. Love them. Got the tattoo again. One of my favorite guitar players. Um, whole band on fire at that point. 93, we got the Somberlin by Dissection. Some black metal here. Melodic black metal masterpiece. This one is from Sweden. John Notveet on vocals and uh, guitar. Great musician. Super young at this point, like 18, 19 years old, which makes it even that more impressive. Just a kid freaking putting out a masterpiece like that. Very impressive. A lot of great songs in the Cold Winds of Nowhere, the title track. Um, a lot of great stuff on there. And my number two from 93, got to go with Individual Thought Patterns by Death. Um, greatest death metal band of all time the musicianship the technicality all just freaking in a league of their own in my opinion chuck a genius on vocals and guitar um 94 gonna go with euthanasia again megadeth taking the top spot i promise they're not gonna be number one for every year they released an album but they uh they did take quite a few and 94 again just very consistent again not quite as thrashy even as um countdown they went Slightly more commercial. There is a ballad on here, Tu Le Monde, which is probably my least favorite song, if we're going to be honest, on this album. But really good melodic guitar solo from Marty in that one. It's not a bad song at all. Just like Reckoning Day is super heavy and awesome. The Killing Road is my favorite song on here. Victory. A lot of great stuff. So that is my number one from 94. And again, in the past, I had, you know, these two albums flip-flopped, like two and three. In the past, I had this specific album, number three. But Got to put it number two for now. Time by Merciful Fate. My favorite album by them. I uh, love most of this. Nightmare uh, Be Thy Name is my favorite song by them. Just King. His voice is so cool on that song. Super evil and dark. The whole album is, but that song specifically. Uh, Angel of Light, Witch's Dance. All amazing. So that is my number two of 94. 
95, I'm going to go with Death, Symbolic as my number one. Absolute masterpiece. Greatest death metal album of all time. Might not be cool to say that because they're a popular band, but whatever, dude. Come on. This is a masterpiece. Top to bottom, every song is awesome. Gene Hoagland on the freaking drums is destroying. Uh, the guitar work is ridiculous. The production is amazing. Zero Tolerance, Empty Words, Sacred Serenity, Misanthrope, Crystal Mountain. Just all these songs are amazing. This is a top 20 album of all time in metal. Um, my number two from 95 was Seen Through the Veils of Darkness, The Second Spell from Gehenna, a band that I love. Great underrated Norwegian black metal that uh, definitely should have gotten more attention in the scene. They are one of the better black metal bands of all time, definitely in the second wave for sure. We're talking about bands, you know, that came up there in the early to mid 90s. Gehenna is awesome. So go check them out. Uh, it's not super crazy, but it's still obviously black metal and pretty heavy, extreme, dark, but kind of melodic at times as well. 96, I'm going to go without question with Dusk and Her Embrace by Cradle of Filth. Love Cradle. Danny Filth has uh, another really unique voice. Uh, super impressive how well his voice has held up over the years. He's been singing in that super high pitch, just screaming, amazing. Very impressive voice. You know, people make fun of metal vocalists, but, you know, I'd like to see people that make fun of that, like attempt that. Your voice will get blown out or you'll just start coughing when you try to do those screams and get your voice up that high. Just awesome album, super dark. Is it black metal? You know, there's the debate, gothic black metal, melodic. It's like a mix of melodic black metal, gothic elements in there. I just call it extreme metal, whatever. It's amazing. Um, and then my number two, I'm going to go with the Canyon Chronicle from Ancient, another band that is from Norway, somewhat similar style to Cradle of Filth probably a bit more even towards like the gothic uh, metal and like the whole vampire thing. They got like a video. For, they actually, there was a video on M I, There's an MTV video of a song from that Canyon Chronicle album by Ancients, which is pretty wild to think. You know, 25 years ago, that stuff was, I don't know how often it was on, on MTV, but if you look up the music video on YouTube, it's got the little like MTV logo on the bottom. So I guess it was on at some point, which is super cool. Some random black metal band from Norway which again, they deserve a lot more attention. Great freaking band. Um, my number, again, I'm saying my number, but from 1997, my number one is going to be Unleash the Beast by uh, Saxon. So Saxon, really from this album up through the Inner Sanctum, I've been saying was an amazing run. All those albums are fantastic. Uh, this album here specifically is maybe, I, I, it might be my favorite Saxon album. A lot of great stuff on there. They didn't freaking lighten up at all. Still very heavy, classic sounding metal. Um, and then my number two for that year, got to go with Cryptic Writings. You know, it's very close for me, but I do have that one actually right here. I guess I'll show since, yeah, awesome. Um, and this one, they went even more commercial, but still very, very awesome. Um, got some heavy stuff on here like She-Wolf. But again, you've got like, um, what is on here? That's like pretty, pretty soft, uh, probably would say almost like almost honest that one's pretty light um but overall pretty hard rocking album secret place is a super cool song mastermind's good trust is you know more melodic and whatever but the solo and you know the vocals i think from dave are really good on this as well so that is my number two of 97 um 98 we're gonna go with cruelty and the beast by cradle of filth so second time cradle is appearing at number one but it's well deserved Super consistent, amazing album. Um, again, that like mix of black and gothic and melodic black or whatever you want to call it. Just great freaking uh, classic extreme metal, I would say. Um, and my number two for that year as of now, I'm going to go with Into the Infernal Regions of the Ancient Cult, the debut album from Inquisition. My favorite black metal band, so you might be hearing about them a bit more as we go on, but... Um, Dagon, Incubus, they had a bass player on this album. The only one they did have a bass player. I don't know his name. Uh, I didn't write it down, but nobody cares about him. Uh, just really, really great start to their career, I think. You know, super unique sound, very dark, ritualistic atmosphere is what I use to describe. You know, if you're listening to that, just super evil sounding and cool, I think. But uh, great band, great album. 1999, going to go with Criteria for a Black Widow. Annihilator, Jeff Waters, um, one of the best, 
one of the best ever, not just in metal, but one of the best guitar players ever. Just his shredding is so clean, precise, fast, the tone, everything about it is amazing. Bloodbath, uh, Back to the Palace is super cool, kind of sequel to um, the Fun Palace. What else we got on here? Nothing Left is not one that's amazing that I'd recommend to go check out. But they brought back most of the lineup from uh, Alice in Hell on this album. It was the 10-year anniversary. So they got Randy Rampage on vocals. Jeff is there, obviously, the mainstay of the band. Uh, really, really great album that is pretty overlooked. So go check it out. And my number two is At the Heart of Winter by Immortal. This is the one where they started to really incorporate like more thrash elements to it. Uh, so you could call it like black thrash or just thrashy black metal, whatever you want to say. The riffs are just ferocious on here. Heavy, aggressive. You got Horg on the drums. Aboth, of course, on... Uh, I, I believe, yes, this was the first one where Demonaz did not play. He had, I think he might have had arthritis or something wrong where he couldn't play, but he did continue to write the lyrics until he returned to the band like full time as the vocalist and for the 2018 album and guitarist. But um, yes, so amazing album right here. Very close to being number one, but number two, still, uh, still impressive to get up to number two on these. Um, 2000, so. Moving along here. I don't know. This is a decent pace, I guess. But 2000, I'm going to go with Midian, Cradle of Filth again. So three years in a row that they've released albums. or There are three albums in a row there. You know, there's a, every two years or whatever. But yeah, amazing album. This was the return of Paul Allender on guitar. He was on their first album and then left for a while and came back. I do really dig his playing. So glad to have him come back into the band, even though when he was out, they were still putting out masterpieces. Uh, Danny's voice still sounds amazing. This was the first. I credit this album as being like the album that really helped me get more into black metal. Um, I know I wouldn't say it's completely black metal, but kind of towards that realm. And then I went farther into it and more of like straightforward black metal stuff. This was probably three, four years ago now, but uh, amazing album. And then my number two for 2000, I'm going to go with an album called The Black Opera by a band called Opera Nine. Awesome stuff, um, kind of in the same realm as Cradle of Filth, just like gothic black metal type uh, from Italy. Really, really great vocals. Really cool album that I'd highly recommend if you like Cradle of Filth, Hakate Enthroned, Ancient Ceremony, you know, that gothic black metal type stuff. Go listen to some Opera 9. That album specifically is freaking awesome. 2001, we got Horror Show as my number one. Iced Earth again. Uh... As I said, Barlow came along on vocals. Uh, he's been in the band at this point for a little while, a couple albums. And, of course, John on uh, John Schaefer on guitar is fantastic. Great rhythm player, great riff machine guy. And uh, Richard Christie was on the drums here, who is a freaking awesome drummer. He was in death on their last album, The Sound of Perseverance. But uh, really, really cool freaking album here. Uh, looking at these songs, Wolf, Damien um what is uh yeah frankenstein that one just that riff to open it up is ridiculous go listen to that song for sure if you're gonna listen to anything from that um and then my number two of oh one i got uh honor valor pride by uh bolt thrower super heavy amazing death metal from the uk england over there one of the better death metal bands of all time um riff riff galore here if you like riffs go listen to this super heavy and awesome uh, 2002, Invoking the Majestic Throne of Satan by Inquisition, mentioned that they would probably be appearing back up here, but amazing. This is uh, one of my favorite black metal albums ever. Uh, top to bottom, just aggressive, heavy, brutal, amazing. It gets more melodic in spots, you know, it's not just pounding heavy, like fast crazies the whole time, you know. They mix in like some uh, spacey kind of just elements like that, just, uh, very melodic at times, but it is very heavy for a lot of the time. Uh, and my number two, Sons of Northern Darkness by uh, Immortal. So Immortal and uh, Inquisition and another band I'll talk about here in a minute. My favorite black metal bands, but love this album. One by One is one of my favorite songs ever. Listed it as like my number 10 or 9 when I did that video. That album's a masterpiece. Um number again saying number my number one of 2003 gonna go with damnation in the day by cradle of filth you know you like what you like 
I like these, uh, the run of albums Cradle was on at this point and still really like this one. Some people I don't, I think didn't really like this album as much because they brought in like a choir or like big choir and orchestra or whatever to add in in the background. I think it helped add to the really dark atmosphere, you know, sounds super cool. Um, a lot of great songs on here. Danny Filth, great vocalist, as we talked about. But uh, looking at these songs, The Promise of Fever is amazing. Hurt and Virtue, An Enemy Led, uh, The Tempest, or this is cracked up on the back. But yeah, a lot of really great songs. Mannequin, I think, is cool. There's a cool music video for that one, I think. But uh, great album. And my number two of 2003 was Profane Genocidal Creations by Dark Fortress, which I mentioned before. This is another one of my favorite black metal bands, um, for sure. Dark Fortress is just amazing. So many great albums from them. 2004. Got to stay hydrated with that uh, RC Cola. Uh, 2004. Again, we got Magnificent Glorification of Lucifer by Inquisition. Feel weird saying that, but uh, just the album cover, guys, album name. And I do actually have this one. I don't know why I'm not grabbing it, but I've got that. And um, great album again. Um, Baptized in Black Goat Blood, open it up. You know, these, these song titles are crazy, but the riffing, the song structure, the way... Dude, this, these songs are so good if you like aggressive, you know, heavy, just heavy shit, so... Go listen to it, Dagon, super cool, unique voice, he's a riff machine, love his tone, Incubus on the drums, one of my favorite drummers of all time, so that is my number one of 04. Uh, my number two of 04 was Inferno by uh, Motorhead, great stuff, I think this is their best album of all time, super impressive, you know, since they were together for so long, Mickey D, Phil Campbell in the band at this point, um, Love those guys. R.I.P. Lemmy again, of course, but um, amazing album. 2005, we're going to go with uh, Nocturnal Beast by Lord Belial is my number one. Great melodic um, Swedish black metal, super underrated, amazing band. Um, and then Those Once Loyal by Bolt Thrower, taking the honorable mention here. Uh, again, super heavy, amazing riffs, kind of more mid-paced uh, death metal, I'd say, but uh, freaking awesome riffs. Very heavy, again. 2006, so I'm on my last page of notes here, going to try to get through it, but um, 2006, we got Immortal by the band Anthem, Akio Shimizu, that is all I gotta freaking say, but the guy is a ridiculous, amazing player, super underrated, he joined the band in 92 for Domestic Booty, they broke up for a while, when they got back together in about 2000, he's been their guitar player again since. One of my favorites, um, just amazing player, kind of reminds me of Jeff Waters, that style, like fast, clean, precise shred. Uh, so go check out that album for sure. You will not regret it. Japanese Juice Priest is their nickname, and they live up to it. Um, Spirit of Sorrow by Fear of Eternity has got to be in my, uh, my number two for 06. And there was some sources that said that came out in 2007, but I'm going to go with 06 for it. Great album, Andrea Teleni, one man black metal band, atmospheric black metal from Italy. Really awesome stuff. Keyboard heavy, which is just super cool and like mesmerizing at times. Um, just awesome stuff. 07, you guys guessed it. We got some uh, more Megadeth here, United Abominations, which I do have signed by the Drover Brothers. You can see some writing on there. That's pretty cool. And I do really dig the lineup. You know, I dig every Megadeth lineup, but really, really great album here. I did rank this in my top five Megadeth albums of all time. Washington is Next is in my top 10 Megadeth songs. So a lot of great stuff here. Only album with Glenn on guitar. Great player. But a uh, really, really awesome album that I dig quite a bit. Number, or my number two of 07. Got to go with uh, Give Me Your Soul, Please by King Diamond. The most recent King Diamond album at this point. That's kind of sad. It's been over 14 years or about 14 years since that came out new albums in the works but uh if that were to be the last king diamond album that is the 12th in their catalog and it's an amazing album king still sounds cool on the vocals of course andy larock uh the only other constant member of the band amazing riffs great tone a lot of great songs on there um 2008 got anthem again at number one with black empire Please, if you're not familiar with these uh, 2000s Anthem albums, specifically the 06 and 08 album, go listen to them. Just amazing riffs, 
good vocals, it's all around the guitar playing from Akio is ridiculous and amazing. Um, and then my number two of 08, I had a few listed down, but I got to go with Graza, the debut album from Magua, Polish black metal band. Love the melodies. It's really raw, but you know, it's like a, it's really raw sounding, but the production's like good at the same time. It's weird to describe and weird to explain, but amazing stuff. Love those guitar melodies and riffs. Uh, the tone is fantastic and it's really, really cool album. Um, 2009, you guessed it, Megadeth uh, again here, but well-deserved, dude. Freaking Endgame is a blistering, heavy, freaking fast, thrash, metal, modern masterpiece, I'd say. A lot of great stuff on here. Dialectic Chaos, super cool intro, uh, or, you know, instrumental intro song there first song this day we fight it rolls into which is super heavy go listen to those freaking guitar solos trading off from chris broderick and dave mustaine so what's the first with chris broderick who is a amazing player 44 minutes is awesome and really the rest of the stuff head crusher i could list all of it but awesome album there from 09 that is my number one and my number two from 09 i'm gonna go with um babylon by wasp so Wasp, unfortunately, didn't get any number one spots, but they had three runner-ups. These are tough to do. Got to make tough calls, but uh, Babylon's a super cool album. A lot of good stuff on there. Um, Blackie's voice is still sounding really good at this point, I think, at least, and uh, it's just a really, really good album. 2010. So we got, uh, I'm going to go with Crisis in Utopia by Holy Grail as my number one of 2010. Really awesome stuff. This band um, broke off from White Wizard. Three-fourths of this lineup was originally in White Wizard. They broke off because the bass player of White Wizard was like their band leader. Uh, he wanted to keep it straight, classic Iron Maiden influence, but the rest of the guys wanted to incorporate some more thrash. So the singer said, basically, if two bands, you know, had a baby and Holy Grail is the baby, you know, what band, what bands, you know? are those and then he said megadeth and cacophony so fast amazing shred some thrash elements but still some new wave of uh just some some traditional metal you say the new wave of traditional heavy metal is what this uh group is kind of classified in so it's a mix of thrash and traditional shred amazing guitar great vocals from james paul luna who is i'd say my probably like my favorite modern vocalist just amazing voice um and my number two from 2010 i'm gonna go with ominous doctrines by uh freaking inquisition again it's tough not to put them at number one it's very close but uh, a lot of great songs on that album command of the dark crown desolate funeral chant a lot of great stuff this is when they got really kind of like spacey you know that's a word my buddy quest for metal says a lot but it does describe it that at you know atmosphere of the album kind of spacey it gets more melodic at times but also just blistering fast and heavy black metal um of course at times um 2011 i'm gonna go with head of the pack by skull fist got their 2010 ep up on the wall right there but the 2011 full-length debut from skull fist love it got um, one of my favorite songs ever um, ride the beast which is also on that 2010 ep but i like the head of the pack version better awesome freaking album top to bottom um this is the best in my opinion new wave of traditional heavy metal band so if you want a modern band that has a great classic sound Go listen to Skull Fist, and um, I'd say, for people that don't know them, I've said this before, but they're like a blend of, I'd say, Dokken, Iron Maiden, and Exciter, so yeah, that sound, that I don't know who that wouldn't sound appealing to, so go check them out. And uh, my number two of uh, 2011, I'm actually going to go with an album called March of the Norse by uh, Demonaz, so this was the solo album. It's the only solo album currently by Demonaz, um, of course, from Immortal fame, um, guitarist. And at this point, he wasn't playing guitar yet. He was still having whatever problem he was having. So he got Icedale on guitar, who is from um, Enslaved. Don't almost mess up there, but we got it. Enslaved, um, great guitar player. Um, Demonaz did the songwriting and vocals on here, and I think his voice actually sounds pretty cool. And this album, it's not straightforward black metal. It's almost like blackened Viking metal. So really epic, kind of uh, you could compare it to some of the early 90s Bathory, but uh, maybe not quite as viking -y. It's kind of weird to describe. Just epic, amazing-sounding metal here, so go check it out. 
2012, I'm going to go with The Electric Age by Overkill. Overkill, one of the most consistent bands in metal. And this album is fantastic. Yeah, it's tough between this one and Iron Ironbound, which one I would say is their best modern album. But Electric Age is fantastic, my number one of 2012. And I'm going to go with Burning Oath by Anthem as my number two. Another great modern album by Anthem, who has been on a freaking... They're another one of the most consistent bands ever in metal. All of their 2000s stuff up to now, there's like 10 albums, are all great. So go check that out. 2013, I'm going to go with Death by Fire by Enforcer. Amazing, Swedish, classic sounding metal band. Again here, it's another new wave of traditional heavy metal band. Olaf Wickstrand, the band leader. Amazing voice, great guitar player. A lot of awesome songs on there. And they're kind of, you know, they have a bit more like Motorhead feel to them, I think, a bit. But uh, like Motorhead mixed with Judas Priest, mixed with Iron Maiden type. Just amazing stuff. And uh, my number two of 2013, I'm going to go with Black Testament by the band Svartsen. S-V-A-R-T-S-Y-N, I believe. Um, great Swedish black metal. So two bands from Sweden right here. But um, Svartsen, I've talked about them a ton on the channel here. Love them. It's uh, led by a guy named Ornius, who uh, does the vocals. Who I think he has one of the most sinister, evil-sounding voices in black metal. Super cool. Fits the atmosphere of the music. And he does the guitar. He has a great, like, muddy, thrashy guitar tone. It's just really chaotic, especially this album. Really good production, honestly. Chaotic, heavy black metal. Fans of thrash, I think you'll definitely like this. If you like, you know, classic Bathory, classic Slayer, uh, you should like this. So go check it out. Um, 2014. This one is in my top 10 metal albums of all time. Got Chasing the Dream by Skull Fist. They were number one for uh, 2011, number one for 2014 here. Got the guys there, always messing around. You know, it says Johnny Nesta on shit, Jackie Slaughter on stuff, and Casey Slade on the bass. So uh, they kind of have like a, you know, lighthearted, kind of comedic edge to them, which I think is pretty cool. And the music is top tier. I discovered them through the movie Deathgasm, which a couple of their songs were in that movie. Just pretty funny, like horror, like horror comedy mix or whatever, kind of spoof or I don't even know. Uh, movie that was on Netflix, Hour to Live, one of the best songs on here, Mean Street Rider, which is awesome, uh, Chasing the Dream, top to bottom, all these songs are amazing, so go listen to that, please, if you don't know it, it's one of my favorite albums ever, and uh, my number two for 2014, there was a couple that I was debating between, but I, I gotta go with uh, some Redeemer of Souls, gotta show some love to this album, uh, super cool, gatefold vinyl, holographic, whatever, but um, this one, I saw a Priest on this tour, it was a combination of like a 30th anniversary for, uh, or for uh, it was the Redeemer of Souls tour, but they were mixing in some 30th anniversary stuff for uh, Defenders of the Faith, so they played like Love Bites and a couple other songs that they wouldn't normally play, but it opened with Dragonaut, which is an awesome song that opens up this album and um, a lot more great songs on here. Halls of Valhalla, which is, I know they played it a decent bit. I don't know if it's a mainstay staple of their set at this point, but they play it a good bit. And for good reason, uh, Richie Faulkner, you know, he comes out and just hits that opening riff. It's super cool. Uh, what other song on here was amazing? It was Battle Cry. Battle Cry is just freaking incredible. I listed it as a top 20 pre-song of all time for sure i think i actually had that one like ninth or 10th that's how much i like it uh just awesome album again i saw this tour so it was first time seeing priest so maybe that gives me a bit of bias but i think it's a great album um 2015 from beyond by enforcer again here amazing album same stuff could be said as i said is the uh, 2013 album i had at number one but really awesome album there and um number you know number two i had a bit of trouble differentiating between a few albums what i wanted at number two but i'm gonna go with uh exercise and futility by magua had magua at number one for 08 08 um god dang hold on <sighs> okay so uh going here on one freaking take 54 minutes in but uh yes awesome freaking album again by magua great the melodies are just top tier with that band um 2016 this one was tough, again, but I gotta go with freaking Megadeth. This album actually did fall back a bit for me in my overall Megadeth ranking, but, you know, still my favorite album of 2016. 
Thought it was amazing when it came out. Again, don't love it quite as much, but I still do think it's pretty freaking good. And I've got it signed by all the guys that played in the band on the album. So Chris Adler there instead of Dirk uh, was their first with Kiko on guitar, who is awesome. Reminds me a bit of Marty, his, his style. Super smooth, awesome player. And um, my number two for 2016... I'm going to go with, I had the CD sitting around, but yeah, it's tough again because there's a couple albums, but I'm going to go with Times of Pride and Peril by uh, Holy Grail, another album from that band that I, I had their uh, 2010 album at number one, but Times of Pride and Peril, that is their most recent at this point, which is kind of unfortunate. They need to hurry up and put out a new album because they're great, but uh, again, just awesome vocals from James Paul Luna, Eli Santana on guitar as a shred machine. And um, yeah, overall, just great album, great band. 2017, going to go with Coagulating Darkness by Hellripper, the full-length debut by that band, which is a one-man band from Scotland, led by a guy named James McBain. Super awesome musician, love his vocals. You know, this band, I describe them as a blend. You know, if you haven't heard them, it's like a mix of Overkill by uh, Motorhead, Kill Em All by Metallica, and I'd say, you know, the first Bathory album, self-titled, all blended together. Just classic sounding black, brash, black speed, metal, freaking killer stuff, so go check that out. And um, my number two for 2017, I'm going to go with Protestus, Magicom Diaboli by Asagram. Amazing, amazing all-female black metal band. Uh, the band leader's name is Obscura, is what she goes by. She's from the Netherlands. Super amazing, cool, dark voice. Her guitar playing, she does a guitar on this as well. It's fantastic. Uh, just awesome black metal. So go. If you don't know it, I mean, I'm sure most of y'all know most of this stuff, but I feel like that one's kind of uh, a bit more obscure. So go listen to it if you don't know it and you like black metal, Asagram um 2018 so another one that was really tough for me but looking at these couple i wrote down right here on the spot i gotta go with tales of splendor and sorrow by iron flame another one-man band uh this guy's name is andrew decagna that does all the instruments and vocals i think his voice freaking sounds like almost like a blend of jeff tate and uh, bruce dickinson super high majestic soaring voice overall the music could be compared to uh you know classic queens right classic iron maiden Really, really great stuff. My number two, I got to go with Twist of Fate by the band Hitten. H-I-T-T-E-N. Great band from Spain. Another kind of Iron Maiden-y feel to, like, another one of those bands. A lot of these newer bands, they're in the new wave of traditional heavy metal. Their obvious main influence is Iron Maiden. A lot of that same kind of, like, dual guitar melody style and the uh, riffs and all that. Similar to Classic Maiden, so... It's got that feel, but I don't really have a problem with it. It's great stuff. Uh, 2019, I'm going to go with Burn the Night by Riot City. This one was my standalone, like easily my number one for uh, for 2019. Just great freaking album. Band from Canada. Sounds like classic Judas Priest. Just amazing high soaring vocals, heavy riffs, great melodies, great solos, great tone. Everything about it's awesome. Really looking forward to what that band does in the future. And uh, my number two for 2019, going to go with uh, the self-titled debut from Mystic, which is a Swedish band that it's mostly girls. I don't know if it's three-fourths or if it was the whole band, but really great, great band, uh, really young, like in their early 20s or whatever. So they got a lot of potential going forward as well. It's kind of um, like traditional metal, but with like a tint of like black metal element feel to it. Kind of dark atmosphere, which is really cool. And my number one of 2020, last year here, finally. Got Dark Revolution by Tokyo Blade. Dude, Tokyo Blade is a legacy type band. The first album came out like in 1983. And all these years later, super impressive to me that they, they've actually got four-fifths of the band that was on the debut album in 83. Still in the band right now, um, Alan Marsh on vocals, who still sounds fantastic. Love his voice. And this album, top to bottom, I thought was really good and consistent. Again, super impressive that uh, they're putting out an album this good that late in their career. And my number two honorable mention here, got to go with uh, Dawn of the Damned by Necrophobic. It was really close between that one and the Hellripper album that came out last year. But, dude, Dawn of the Damned, super consistent. Um, mix, it's like a blend of you know, death and black metal, black and death metal, whatever you want to call it. 
they dress super cool. They they got the black metal look, but it might lean a s bit more towards melodic uh, death metal. But uh, just super cool, dark, amazing guitar work, melodic, just amazing album. And that does freaking wrap it up. And, you know, I, I didn't write it down. I kind of forgot. But 2016, another one that was really close was uh, Bloodshed Across the Empyrean Altar Beyond the Celestial Zenith by Inquisition. That one I meant to mention. But, yes, finally, my number one and two hard rock or hard rock and metal album so basically my favorite albums of every single year from 1970 to 2020 i want to know what y'all thought i want to know your if you want to go for it let me hear in the comments give me from 70 to 2020 your favorites and your second favorite album hard rock and metal of all those years and uh, as usual you guys thank you so much for watching and until next time